Hey everyone, so this is really exciting. A major change has occurred in the way that we can create our AI images and art. For example, this is an image that I recently generated, but what's interesting is what's underneath it is this. And yes, feel free to be in awe of my majestic MS Paint skills. But what's really crazy is the fact that all of that occurred in real time. So today I'm gonna to give you a sneak peek into what's coming. Plus we're gonna take a deeper look into EverArt, an AI image generator that we looked at earlier that has some killer features for consistent characters and styles. Okay, let's dive in. So the big breakthrough comes to us via LCMs or latent consistency models. This is a model that generates images really, really quickly, like near real time. But to me, where it really shines is when you open up a painting or drawing program and use that as an input. Now, there are a few ways to do this and it can get a little technical, but thankfully, Crea.ai has a solution for us. So right off the bat, this feature is in beta. That said, I did speak to Crea yesterday. So after we take a look, I'll let you know how long it'll be before this feature goes wide. So kicking off, you'll be greeted with the canvas screen. Uh, you'll have the ability to set a prompt down here. I did concept art sci-fi planet. You can see that Crea has actually already started to generate. So uh, what you wanna do is move over to the canvas fill color and move in. You can see it's, it's already starting to generate that quickly. Uh, so let's go with something kind of red in a kind of Marsy look. Um, and yeah, that's already kind of cool. But the real fun of it is when you start using these shapes and brush tools. So I'm just gonna grab a brush here and just sort of make a mess. So I've changed the color to this and uh, let's just start kind of laying some random shapes in not even shapes just yeah it's that it's happening that quickly like so this is all i'm not cutting this or anything this is all just what kriya is doing on its own we change the color out to add in some more details um i had that left over from before so it's we can always grab this and just delete it as well you also have brush size control here and in the canvas you actually have opacity controls as well which is pretty handy uh, so let's just add in something around here like this, see what happens. Yeah, now we're in a cavern. Uh, so yeah, really, really, really cool. Over on the right side, we have different styles that we can apply to it. For example, this is cinematic, uh, an illustrative style bloom, which probably isn't gonna work very well for this particular image. And then finally a product. Um, template. One thing that I found incredibly fun when you're sort of in this exploratory phase is by hitting this button, which is the randomized prompt, you can just, it'll just sort of roll different prompts for you and come out with different ideas. Moving on to something with a little more intentionality. Uh, here's a cat. Come on, that's totally a cat. Uh, but what's kind of cool is that since I used an ellipsis shape for his head, um, we can then also move the head and that will react in real time. So this is actually something that you can do to slightly pose your characters as well, which is pretty neat. So let's move the ears a little bit forward. Uh, you can see that all happening in real time. Another interesting thing we can do is use image references. For example, on the left, we have our old friend of the channel, Danielle Van Den Ock, the Dutch football player uh, as a pirate. Again, this looks nothing like Danielle Van Den Ock, as we have learned many times. On the right, we have Kriya's output solely from that image source. Uh, Kriya does do that very typical AI art thing where it's not gonna give you a one-to-one, -one, uh, but what would the fun that be anyhow? So very quickly, I'm just going to outline Danielle very terribly, by the way, and see what we get out of this. So just by very quickly, very basically painting over Daniela, we end up with this. And what I find really interesting is that, so now we have the ability to take, say, Daniela's arm here, and kind of move it across. Oops, ended up moving that too far. Uh, moving it across. Now, you do notice that her hand is now behind her back. Um, we can actually just move it to the front here as well. Give that a second to take hold. And yeah, there we go. So you can see as we move things around a little bit, like subtle changes do end up occurring. Um, so that is something to be aware of. So it they will take some futzing. Uh, and I would recommend that when you start moving into like the nuance phase that you should probably go as subtle as possible. Uh, if you mess up horribly as well, there is an undo function over here. You also do have the ability to modify the prompt. So uh, if we put a female pirate holding a sword, then that will populate as you draw a sword in. So let's put a sword here. There we go. Not the best sword ever, but uh, let's see it in a different mode and see what, oh, that looks kind of cool. 
and actually that looks super cool. So obviously the better an artist you are, the less heavy lifting Korea has to do for you. I obviously am not a great artist. We'll be taking a look at someone that is in just a little bit. Another interesting trick that someone ran across, I forgot to bookmark who, so I apologize, is that you can actually take one of your outputs. This is Cyberpunk Woman, White Hair, City Street, um, with the basic drawing here. And just, But if you grab the output and just drag it over, um, it'll somewhat improve the output. So it's just kind of a cool way of getting multiple looks out of one generation. Another stupid fun thing that you can do is add in transparent PNGs. So we're gonna take this PNG of Godzilla because Godzilla. So yeah, super fun. Ooh, it's kind of a scandalous Godzilla there. And just to add in because it is a Godzilla movie, uh, I threw some random PNG explosions in here as well to end up with this image, which is pretty awesome. And another thing that was added just today, if you're not a fan of using the Krea tool set, uh, which I do have to admit is a little bit on the limited side and kind of finicky, but at the same time, I mean, this thing is like four days old, so I'm giving them a very wide level of latitude on this. But additionally, you can now actually link to an external screen. So if you want to use Photoshop, for example, uh, you simply hit this button, you'll get a pop-up. Obviously these are the windows that I have open right now. Uh, I'll click Photoshop and share it. And sure enough, there is my Photoshop window. So for those of you who are more comfortable with working in Photoshop or really any other uh, you know, painting software, you can do so, uh, procreate whatever you wanna do. Uh, and it works pretty much just as fast. The one thing I'll say is when you're in this windowed mode though, um, you can see here that it's actually catching the Photoshop toolbars as well. So you'll wanna make sure that you are able to go into, in Photoshop, it'll be view, uh, and then go down to screen mode and then enter full screen mode so that um, you don't end up, you know, getting all of that junk. And then have your rulers turned off, obviously, as well. One of my favorite things over the last couple of days has just been to sort of randomly kind of paint along and just kind of see what comes out. Hitting the random button and then just continuing on with it. But what if you are actually a really great artist? Well, if you're Martin Nibelong, you are taking Korea and hooking it up to the PlayStation software Dreams and doing digital sculpting in it, which is something that I don't think that anyone realized that this would be a use case for, but I mean, here it is and it looks pretty amazing. Titus hooked up Blender to Korea and uh, with the prompt isometric view of a town Pixar animation style is essentially doing real-time rendering. And Vic is showing here that you can kind of get away with some real-time animation with Korea. It's not 100% there, definitely not the intended use, but you know, it shows it kind of can be done. As far as when everyone can start using Korea's real-time generation, uh, I did speak with them yesterday and basically they're currently scaling up their GPUs as they let people in, essentially trying not to overload or break the system. That said, they did say hopefully within a week they'll be able to let a pretty considerable amount of people in, so definitely sign up at the link below. Korea does have a whole other section that is just a straight image generator as well uh, and a fairly generous free plan, so you know the sign up is definitely worth it for that alone anyhow. In the meantime, you can actually start using an LCM right now via Hugging Face. Uh, I've outlined that whole process in another video that is also linked below. Moving on, I did a video recently on everart.ai, which is an image generator that allows you to train your own models. At the time, they were just getting started, so they asked me not to show their UI as things were you know, still under construction. Uh, but I've gotten the all clear now, so I wanted to dive in to give you a full breakdown. So admittedly, the UI is still very clean. Uh, these are some models that I've trained. As you can see, uh, when I did the Bruce Lee Terminator one, uh, that was here. Um, these are all the various images that were created with that particular model. Well, there's a few other models up here. We'll go over those in just a second. And yes, that is me drinking a cup of coffee. Training a model is about as easy as it gets. You basically just upload up to 50 images, name your model, and then hit submit. And in about, I would say 15 minutes, you have a fully trained model. Now, I don't know exactly why, but I've had Akita on my brain a lot lately. So I use that as an excuse to rewatch the movie and grab 50 screenshots as I did. Um, so these were the images that I uploaded and these were some of the outputs that I got using the Prompt City Streets Night. We got uh, this and this, which were pretty cool. So playing around with this model and giving it a pretty heavy hand towards Akira, uh, I gave it the prompt wide angle animation, teenager in a red jacket, riding a motorcycle through a cyberpunk city, night neon lights. And um, yeah, that's 
pretty heavily uh, influenced. Uh, there was this one as well. I will say that the city background itself is not really like the Otomo animation style, but it's kind of more in a modern uh, you know, cyberpunk vibe. But to be honest, I'm actually okay with that. I don't necessarily want a one-to-one -one copy of Akira. I want something influenced by it. I was really interested in seeing what would happen if you fed it your own information. So uh, I ended up taking some unlettered pages from a comic I did called Henchman Inc. It's a comic that was published a number of years ago, but the publisher went out of business and the rights reverted back to me so I can do whatever I want with it. Uh, the quick pitch on it is, why would anyone actually want to be a henchman for a villain? And the answer to that is that it's a temp service. It was a super fun comic to make. It's just kind of sitting there these days. So I put it up on the Gumroad. It is totally free, but if you feel like leaving a donation, you are more than welcome. So heading back to Everart, I took nine pages from the comic. And interestingly, I initially had thought about individually uploading each panel, but then I was just like, well, let's just see what happens if we upload whole pages. Um, and it was surprising because it actually works. So starting with the prompt comic book illustration, a henchman running out of a bank, um, we got us this, which is pretty accurate to the style of the comic. There are definitely elements to this image that I think a more outlined prompt would have helped, but just stylistically overall, this is really, really on point. Not to say that it's hugely imaginative though. Uh, I also gave it a prompt, a boxer in a boxing ring with Dr. Doom, uh, only because I know that in the training images, there was a boxing ring. Uh, it did pretty well with it, although it's not the most inspiring image. That said, one interesting aspect is that you can feed EverArt in with reference images as well. So I took an image of an actual boxing match, uh, used that in conjunction with the Henchman comic model and ended up with this. Yeah, on the right, it's not exactly Dr. Doom still, but I mean, there's enough there that I think it could be either iterated upon or, you know, in painted out. Now I will say, I think that training works best when you feed it a number of images that are contextually similar uh, and have a fairly similar background style. For example, I took these surreal images. This is from a prompt share I did with the Patreon community and fed those into EverArt. And I have to say that it definitely holds up up. Uh, you know, these images are definitely very similar in tone to our initial input images. Uh, maybe not as scary, but I actually didn't prompt for that as well. It's funny how far you can push it out too. I gave it the prompt sunny day family at the beach and this came out, which is still like tonally similar to our initial images, but not anywhere near as scary and horrifying. So that's where we are today. The amount of control and flexibility we have in terms of image generation has exponentially increased. It's really exciting to see where we are right now. And I can't wait to see what you all are going to be making with this. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.